All right, so this is part four of the cybersecurity home lab project. In today's video, I will be setting up and configuring a VPN server. Now, you may be wondering, why are we creating a VPN server? Well, let's first remember the reason behind this home lab project. We are trying to simulate a corporate network. We have set up a centralized Active Directory environment. Now, this is great if we're trying to manage a corporate network and we have employees joining that network, we can be the admins and configure permissions and limit things and separate privileges, which is all good cybersecurity lingo. But one of the things that we have in our modern age is remote work. Let's say you have an employee who isn't in the corporate office and this employee is traveling or maybe is just a full-time remote worker, how do you give them access to the corporate network and the user profiles and computers? Well, there are multiple ways that you can do this and one of them is by using a VPN server. A VPN server is going to ensure that it has a site-to-site -site encrypted connection between the remote location that the employee is connected to and the corporate network. Now the reason why we'd be configuring a VPN server is so that the remote employee can have access to the Active Directory objects and group policy object. And so then within there, you know, you can set and limit the permissions. There were many different ways I could go about doing this in terms of configuring and setting up a VPN server. The first option that I could have used was install a, the VPN add-on onto the Windows Server 2016 domain. So I wanted to add a little bit more complexity. So what I'm going to do today is I have installed a Linux Ubuntu server and I'm going to be setting up and configuring an OpenVPN server. For those of you who don't know, OpenVPN is an open source uh, VPN. If there is any professionals who are currently watching this, I have a question. If you could leave in the comments down below and you feel comfortable about it, could you tell me, is it common for enterprise environments or the enterprise environments that you've worked in to configure the VPN server on the Windows server? Or do they have like an external party, third party that does this for them? Do they have a different VPN server? I'm curious, because I, I don't really know. Uh, I've never seen um, that kind of implementation in, in, in any enterprise network. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started by configuring and setting up the open VPN access server. All right guys, I have finished installing OpenVPN onto the Linux Ubuntu server. As you can see here, I have the uh, OpenVPN server installed and active currently. To install and set up this OpenVPN server, I went ahead and followed two guides. The first guide was how to install OpenVPN onto the Ubuntu server. And we used a shell script within this guide called openvpn-install. You go through the default settings, input your public IP address, and you are allowed to, you know, install the OpenVPN server. Ah, but little did I know that cheating my way through a shell script was gonna bite me back. <sighs> Guys, I'm having trouble right now figuring out this OpenVPN server configuration. Let me go ahead and show you my troubles so far. Right now I have my domain controller that is my AD server. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why you don't cheat. You don't be the IT nerd and cheat like this. This is a bad, bad implementation. The AD objects, like access for two AD objects via LDAP from the OpenVPN server, okay? The lesson here learned is unless you know what the shell script is doing or you're doing something that's trying to automate a process, there's really no point to do what I just did and take the cheap way of installing an open VPN or whatever you're trying to install. So, make sure you know what the shell script is doing because you're gonna be like me and be an idiot. And this is when I realized I was being an idiot. Guys, I am an idiot. Installed an open VPN using this shell script. Now, little do I know that this shell script is a little different than the configuration for OpenVPN on the official website. So I went ahead and just restarted everything again. I have completely backtracked my steps. I went ahead and decided that I was going to completely reset. Here I have a fresh install of Linux Server 18.04. 
I was using version 20, but now I'm using 1804. After that, I went ahead and used the recommended way to install the Access Server on OpenVPN with Ubuntu 18. Then you can go into the admin UI. It's supplied when you are setting up your OpenVPN server. But now finally, I can connect this to Active Directory. Using LDAP, I can query for the AD objects and then apply that for remote clients. The big lesson here that I just learned is that it's important to know when to take a step back and try something new. Next thing I'm gonna do is connect this to Active Directory via LDAP to query for the AD objects. So let's go ahead and set that up. I have finished configuring LDAP authentication on the OpenVPN server. To do this, I used the admin UI. I went to LDAP authentication, created a bind user, which I'll talk about that in a moment. But I was able to enable LDAP authentication. And through this, I'm able to query against my domain controller, and I have done this successfully. So with the AD bind user, I'm able to look up other user accounts within Active Directory. I just queried the AD bind user with the password to see if I was able to get the uh, details regarding the information and I am able to get it with LDAP. So now I'm able to look up different users and their properties within LDAP through the Access server. And so now I can connect a remote client. Here, let me just explain a little bit more about how this is working all together here, just for a moment. Here we have our OpenVPN access server running on Linux 18.04 server and our domain controller running Active Directory. To get access to the 80 objects, we can use LDAP. To do this, I first went ahead and set up a new user profile titled 80 bind user in Active Directory. Then I logged into the admin user interface of the OpenVPN access server. The details of accessing the admin UI are given when installing OpenVPN through the repository. Once in the admin UI, I turned on LDAP and gave permissions for the AD bind user to query for AD objects. Using the auth CLI tool provided in the OpenVPN documentation, I'm able to query for user objects with LDAP. I also added this bind user to the user permissions table in OpenVPN for administrative purposes. I connected to the OpenVPN server through a Windows workstation. Now, there is no synchronization going on between the LDAP directory and the user permissions table on the Access server, but I can apply permissions to users authenticating at the Access server still. So this is my overall setup of how I did this in my implementation of the OpenVPN Access server and clients. All right, guys, that is it for the OpenVPN Access server implementation and the OpenVPN server in general. Now for the next video in the CyberScript Home Lab, I will be configuring a PFSense firewall and connecting that to Active Directory. So we're getting into some of the more network security type components of this home lab. I'm excited to start adding some more network security type things. Until the next video, I hope you guys have learned something new, maybe not, and until the next time, have a good day.